Thank you for the introductory and, and, uh, and for having me here speaking today. What I want to talk to you about is what we believe is the next uh, largest and most impactful market transition there is. Now, I've been, as you've heard, in the market for 20 years, and I've seen and been in a lot of these rooms where people like myself have got up and said the same thing. And I've also seen a lot of them not come to tuition. I've seen some of them have. The ones that have typically failed or have had a delayed start is really where the, the ability to access technology at an affordable uh, price point at the right time, driven by market, uh, by market speed and change, hasn't come together. So what I want to try and show to you and illustrate over the next few uh, minutes is why we believe that this market transition and the internet of everything is, is, be, is going to become a reality, and also why we feel that the journey has already begun. So in 2012, there was more data created than the whole previous 5,000 years combined. So it's a pretty big st statistic. And it's not so much about the data and the amount of the data, it's what we're going to do with that data and how we use that data to enable and change the way we do things. So let's go back to 1984. There was 1,000 devices connected to the internet. So I was 12, and in my house, we didn't have internet. We didn't even have a PC. So if you go, if you go back 20 years, uh, Time magazine did an article uh, front cover saying and talking about the phenomenon of the internet and how it was going to change our world. And, uh, but who had an email address then? Who transacted online? Who uh, did video calling to their kids overseas? It wasn't a reality. So what we're saying from where we started back there and going into the future, what we're predicting and what other people are predicting is this is going to grow and scale into 2020 to 50 billion things connected and devices connected to the internet. Now, it's a big number, I know, and it's scaring We don't have to worry about the number, but if I look at my own journey back nearly 30 years ago, sitting in the house with no computer and no internet, I'm now in a place where I have multiple devices connected to the internet, TV, stereo systems, the kids' multiple devices. We even have uh, our baby's monitor connected into the internet, so when we finally do get time to go out, we can still hear them screaming from wherever we are. So everything that you can get is rapidly being connected to the internet. The amount of new technical information is doubling every two years. So to put this in some sort of context, if someone starts a four-year degree today, in three years' time, the information that they learn in the first half of that year is already redundant. To further that, the these same students that are in school and the, the moving and changing of technology, they're actually studying now for jobs that don't exist. So Forbes magazine said that in 2010, the top, the top 10 jobs in 2010 didn't exist in 2004. So I mean, is this really happening? Is education really driving this fast? Is technology really enabling it this fast? I mean, if I think in my own life and, and about the span of technology, and I look at my youngest 13-year-old boy, he's shown me a few examples recently. We were in a second-hand shop in our uh, local suburb, and uh, he was in there with me, and he started making a lot of noise about, come and have a look at this thing, I've found it, what is it? I went over, he made so much noise, so did the person in the shop. And we found out as we got there, it was a typewriter. He had no idea what it was. When I asked him what he thought it was, he said it's some sort of combination of a printer and a computer. So is it changing? I think it is changing. Now, so if you think about what I've just said, that the data um, in the last year has, has grown and is more than the last 5,000 years combined. This is an even more mind-boggling statistic that the data f now is going to grow 50 times over the next 10 years. So again, it's not so much about, it didn't turn out so well, but it's not so much about the data and we don't need to worry about the data, but it's what we do with that data. It's how we turn that data into information. It's how we connect the people to that information and how we connect systems to that information, thus in giving us more knowledge, giving us the ability to make wiser decisions that can affect the way we operate and the way we live our lives, the way we do business, and, and delivering a, a, a greater sense of productivity that we haven't been able to address today. 
So to the internet of everything, what is it really? It's about connecting the unconnected. It's about taking everyday objects and making them connected. So currently, as we heard earlier, we and our statistics show that 99% of everything is currently unconnected. So is being connected actually important? We've heard from the last speaker, it's very important to him. In fact, in 2011, the UN declared the internet a fundamental human right. So being connected, it's an important thing. But how is it, it's not just about being connected, and that's not what the internet of everything is about. It is about, like I said earlier, and why we believe it's gonna to come to fruition. It's about a bunch of technologies coming together at the right time, at the right price, being available to everybody. So what I'm talking about is not only intelligent and fast networks, being able to connect everywhere in a wider area, as we talked about with fibre and ultra-fast broadband, but also recently in the example of telecom launching this week, their LTE 4G network. So we're talking about connectivity and having it everywhere and all over the place, but we're also talking about the combination and coming together of microsensors. And these microsensors have the ability to uh, connect and, and sense everything from voice to pollution to sound patterns. And bringing these together and combining them is where the internet of everything is going. I've started back in 1984 with a thousand devices connected into the internet. We've actually come a very long way since then. So where have we come? In fact, we've gone so fast since 1984 that for the first time ever in 2008, there was more things connected to the internet than there are people on this planet. So it, it's, it's pretty crazy how it's going. In fact, the and networks behind this that enabling that need to be there to empower it are actually growing five times faster than any other infrastructure that has been built in the previous past, being electricity networks and telephony networks. So how has this happened? Is it really real? Am I up here just talking about things that aren't happening? Well, what we need to do to, is go backwards to show where and how did this growth come from. So if we move back into fixed PC, where we went to our technology, probably to our office space, we probably had a desktop PC, we had a fixed desktop phone. And then it moved into the evolution of mobility and the rise of mobility, where we had laptops, so we could now go and our technology followed us. And then, of course, with the moving from laptops onto smart devices, smart mobiles, smart tablets. And as you can see, as we did that, and then things like BYOD came and these come into our workforce, the amount of things are rapidly growing faster and faster at an exponential rate. And then we move into now where we are of the internet of everything. It's connecting things. So if you want to take an example of our parking meters, where we've got a piece of equipment that's connected to a network, either wirelessly or fixed. It's got the ability of having uh, been powered with lo needing low power, like solar powered device, connected into back office systems that can uh, read and take a credit card payment, that can take a, connect it into your mobile network and take a payment that way. What we're doing now and what I'm talking about is moving that over into the internet of everything. So it's taking everything that I've just talked about, everything previous in this, taking those things, taking the data that those things create and connecting them with people and using processes to do that. So just to finish off a quick examples that actually exist today. One is a, this uh, parking meter that senses when a car's sitting on it. It's, got a, uh, it's, it's, got, it's powered by a long life battery. It's got wireless connectivity. It's, um, and then that connectivity filters back into uh, a, a, wide a wide area of wireless connectivity telling into a back system when a car park is available so a user can on a smart device or anything realize and know and go to where there is a car park once he gets there he can pay for it. So this is what we're talking about combining everything, not just the networks, not just the things, but connecting it people and making it real. Another good example and why I like this one is about using and thinking about how you use legacy um, assets that you own. So in this case, light poles. Um, so how do you connect sensors to them? How do you light them up? How do you get them to do new things like digital signage? How do you have sensors on them that pick up voice patterns of someone in the area that may be in concern and then you integrate that back into a system that records that area or even send someone to the area to help? And finally, uh, health and connected health and there's a multiple of reasons that this would work but we've now got micro sensors that are even digestible so not just micro sensors that are wearable and washable the ones you can digest will actually track through your system monitor vitals and report back into a system 
So these are just a couple of examples, but the best examples will come and use cases will come from yourselves and how do you utilize this technology in your own business. So finally, what I want to leave you with is this transition's here. We believe it's real. We believe it's now. Transitions don't wait. So start to think about how you're going to leverage this in your own business. Think about how you're running your business today, what's core to your business, what should you be moving off to, a, to your partners, what should be being delivered from the cloud. Are the partners you're partnering with, do they have this connectivity? Do they ha have fast networks? Do they have the ability to deliver this? Do they have ecosystems? And pretty much ask yourself, are you in a space where you're going to have a Kodak moment and you're going to miss the trend altogether, or are you going to have an Apple moment and move forward? Thank you for your time today, and I hope that's left you with some things to think about.